There are so many question marks around smart flip phones. So I decided to take my SIM card out of my main phone and put it in a flip phone for 30 days to answer those questions. Can you trust flip phones? You might be surprised. I certainly was. I moved from my mid-range Google Pixel 7a to a high-end Motorola Razr 40 Ultra, a phone that's currently on sale for around £850 or $1,000 in the US that sets some pretty high expectations and puts it in contention with the proper premium phones from Samsung, Apple and Google. In fact, that is one of the biggest questions surrounding these foldy flippy phones. Are they actually worth their premium over the equivalent slab devices? And that's gonna depend on you because it kind of leads us on to the next question, which is, are these a fad? Are they a fashion statement? Are they a cry for attention? Or are they actually useful being the shapes and sizes that they are? My answer to that question is a little more straight down the middle. See, as a small person, putting a large phone in my pocket is basically begging for it to fall out and smash on the floor, especially when I sit down or bend down to pick something up. And the Razer 40 Ultra, being an example of a flip phone, makes it shorter and far less likely to fall out of my pockets. The same goes for women's pockets for small bags or handbags, but because they open up, it means you don't have to compromise on the main display size. There is no way a fully opened one of these things is fitting in my pockets. And that added depth as a result of the doubled over design isn't all that noticeable. At least it wasn't for me. Now, I have to preface that I wear fairly loose fitting shorts most of the time, but even when wearing my tighter jeans, the 40 didn't feel substantially more cumbersome. And that's something I wasn't expecting. I definitely feel a taller phone as opposed to a thicker one. And of course, this is going to depend massively on the kinds of clothing that you wear. Another thing I wasn't expecting is just how sturdy this thing feels. Now, it's never going to feel as solid as a screen that doesn't move. There have been many cases of people dropping these things and then falling apart on the first drop from around four feet high. Remember, the more moving parts, the more chances for things to break. However, not once was I worried about smashing or cracking the Razer 40 Ultra, despite using it for the full 30 days without a case on it. That said, I did baby it a little more than I would my normal phone, uh, but the hinge felt reassuringly robust and flexible enough to operate with one hand without an issue. But I live in Cornwall in the UK, which is surrounded by water. And the one place I did feel a little bit anxious with the flip phone was by the seaside. You have to be really careful to not get any sand in that hinge because it will damage it and the screen. Thankfully, I was careful enough on my few visits, but your mileage may vary. That said, I'm usually pretty cautious about taking any phone to the beach because, of course, the ingress into the ports and the fact that it can just scratch a normal screen. It doesn't have to be a particularly flippy or foldy one. So it's not all doom and gloom for the flipper. Far from it, in fact. That's a tongue twister. As someone who is always trying to improve productivity, having a phone that doesn't let you use it as quickly as a slab is genuinely helpful. Sure, the outside screen on this thing is usable, but it doesn't give you half the functionality that you would get with it open. And that's mainly due to the fact you just don't have enough screen space. And adding the extra step of actually having to open up the phone to use it properly gave me enough of a barrier that I didn't just immediately pick up my phone half the time when I would have otherwise started procrastinating, doom scrolling, that kind of thing. So from a functionality standpoint, what do these things do differently to a normal phone? They fold shut to give you a bigger screen in a smaller footprint, which I think is quite important and a legitimate reason to buy one. Flip phone makers aren't trying to make the product that does stuff differently to a normal phone, they're just trying to make a different kind of form factor. There are a couple of nice things like the music player, being able to see the notifications more clearly, but also being able to take selfies with the main camera for a higher quality image. It's quite cool. And I really like Motorola's gestures here, but yeah, there's not a crazy amount of added functionality over a standard phone. But what about compromise? What do you have to give up when you want a phone with this form factor? Well, if you're coming from a flagship smartphone, you're going to be giving up a lot of the camera quality now, there's no getting around the fact that there's just not enough room inside these things because each side of the fold has to be thinner. 
So you're not going to be able to get the, the huge sensors with the long periscope lenses, at least on these flip ones. Google's Pixel Fold does actually have a periscope zoom, with the downside being it's just a giant camera bump on the pack. The Razer 40 Ultra with its dual 12 megapixel rear cameras and 32 megapixel selfie camera, given it's made by a company who isn't known for the best camera processing to start with, is able to take some decent photos. You really don't get a potato camera with these things, but you do get a lesser camera than the equivalent slab phone. And of course, if you wanted to go for Samsung's Flip 5, that has even better cameras still, with the majority of the camera prowess being reserved for the much larger and more expensive foldable phones. The smaller Flip ones don't have the best reputation for battery life because they're a lot smaller. When they were first introduced, they really weren't great, but the Razer 40 Ultra is able to give me a full day of usage. Sometimes two days, I'm not even joking. This is with the screen open for the majority of the time with about 70% brightness, a mix of Wi-Fi and LTE, but mostly Wi-Fi with some Bluetooth streaming to my headphones around 30 minutes per day. I actually only really use the phone as I would a Pixel 7a or my Pixel 7a. So mostly Reddit and Wikipedia browsing. In fact, on several occasions, this thing did deliver me those two days of battery life, which is unexpected. I guess the nature of my job means I can't just sit on my phone all day, which is probably helping things, but it still gets me around three hours of screen on time per day. So I'm by no means babying the thing, you know, three hours is a significant portion of the day. Some concerns that you guys wrote in the response to our community tab post were about the crease and why you should care about flip phones at all. To answer the former, the crease is noticeable, especially on these flip phones where you're scrolling down so you kind of feel it more. It isn't crazy distracting, it doesn't feel flimsy, it's just there and it's all right. If you don't like it, don't buy a flip phone. That's all I have to say on the matter. As for whether you should care about folding phones, I'm not really sure anyone cares outside of people who are trying to sell you the things, whether you do or don't care about folding phones. They're neat for those who will appreciate their benefits. And for those who won't, there are tons of other devices on the market. We're not transitioning from slab to folding phones, at least not yet. It's just another kind of phone form factor. And if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. The prices of these things aren't going to drop below the normal versions of their phones because it takes more time and money to develop the tech and the product versus a more traditional phone. But we've already seen the Fold and Flip phones slowly taper down in price in general. Here's how I see it. This phone might cost the same as an iPhone 15 Pro or Galaxy S23 Plus, but they are made for different people. One might value specs and speed, the other a closable screen. One might value a mega main camera, while the other wants a superior selfie shooter. As with most things, it comes down to what you want. And after my 30 days with the Razer 40 Ultra, my thoughts haven't majorly changed about the form factor. The performance was great, the cameras were solid, I had no complaints about build quality or the displays or the battery life, I actually really liked Motorola's quirky add-ons to otherwise a quite stock flavor of Android, especially their gestures. Flip phones are still a kind of phone that I'd recommend, especially to those who want a flip and are on the fence about buying one. I recommend you buy one, maybe get an extended warranty because these things do break, but either way, they are on my recommendations list. It might not be the form factor for me personally, and I look forward to going back to the slab phones and maybe actually looking at the larger folding phones, but that doesn't rule them out for me. And that's a wrap on this 30 day experiment. If you'd like to see more videos in this style, do let us know in the comments. I really enjoyed my time with the 40 Ultra, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Motorola phones in general, this one was really good. Hopefully this video has been informative for those of you on the fence about buying a flip phone. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police and I'll catch you later. Cheers.